So what I want to do today is, just like Monday, um, it's going to be sort of a, like we're still going to be thinking about the dot product today, which we began on Monday, um, or rather we continued on Monday because everything we looked at in the dot product in 3D comes from our understanding of the dot product in 2D. And we looked at the interesting parallel between those. Um, pun not intended, but not avoided either. Anyway, I wanted to bring you back to the syllabus because I think it's so helpful to always draw you back to what's going on here. So just to refresh your memory, right? This is what we looked at last time. Do you recall I was explaining why um, I was teaching you this um, skill, ratio division, internal, external, all that funny stuff. Um, even though ratio division isn't like explicitly named anywhere in the syllabus as you're looking at right now. However, it's just a really great way to uh, experience and encounter and use the particular um, skills and knowledge that the syllabus does want us to learn, particularly all this three-dimensional vector arithmetic. So this is, if you have a look just up the top here, this is um, the structure of the syllabus is that within um, a, a topic like 3D vectors, so that's the V in V1.1, there are like little subsections as well. So this was just in the introduction. We've actually already, if I go over the page, we've already gone into um, V1.2 further uh, operations with three dimensional vectors. I just didn't tell you that we were. So for example, define, calculate, and use the magnitude of a vector. So you can see, do you remember, this is from that Pythagoras result, right? It's just Pythagoras in three dimensions. Um, we haven't spoken explicitly that much about it, but um, what's going on here, you can say if you've got a non-zero vector called u, so any vector except for the zero vector, so it's going somewhere, um, so long as it's facing in any direction, what you can do is you can take that, well let's use this, you can take that vector, right, and you just have to divide by the magnitude, that thing that we got just here, also known as its length, and what you'll get is a unit vector version of that vector. So instead of it being of any arbitrary uh, size, it will be one unit and it will be facing in whichever direction you started with. So all you're doing is having a division by the appropriate scalar, the appropriate number, okay? Uh, last lesson you saw, just moving on, what we did was we defined the, um, the dot product of two vectors in three dimensions and kind of what we're on to now is this idea of using the dot product. Uh, and this is often the way, I don't know if you've noticed this um, about maths, but we kind of often teach you a thing and then we say, okay, this is like a new tool in your toolbox. What can we do with this tool? What kinds of cool problems can we solve with it? And that's kind of what we're going to be having a look at today. We're actually going to continue it on Friday as well. Um, just cheekily, I will also make reference since it's here on the page. Just have a look at this uh, part down the bottom here. It says, um, extend the formula um, and then you've got u dot v equals and you'll recognize this from last lesson. Do you remember this? So this is the, the polar formula um, for a dot product and we called it polar because it's got magnitude and direction built into it. So here's the magnitude part and then here's the direction part, right? Um, the difference is that the direction is the angle between the two vectors if we, if we put them tail to tail, okay? Uh, and it's a very cheeky kind of word there when it says extend, uh, it's another way of saying, hey, the formula works exactly the way it worked in three dimensions as it did in two dimensions. So that's why it's the same formula, okay? So we're gonna jump right off of that and we're gonna say, well, what, what can we do with this thing? Okay, there's a, a lot of different things you can do with the dot product, that's, that's why we learn it. Um, but first, let's just jot down in our notes, so if you wanna make the heading using the dot product. Uh, let's recall, right? We've got our two definitions for the dot product. There's the component definition, um, and then there is also the polar definition we saw before. So let's, the polar definition is the one I want to focus on today. So you guys told me before it's the magnitude of each of the two um, uh, vectors that you've got multiplied by cos of the angle between the two vectors, okay? Um, just as a very, very minor point um, as well, when I was asking you about this on Monday, one of the things we kind of snuck in was this language of absolute value. Do you remember that? 
Now, yeah. um, that's totally fine. Like if you say absolute value, um, like I knew what you were talking about. Like, of course, that, that makes sense, right? However, I, I kind of want to um, expand on that, that notation that the absolute value idea really makes sense when you're just thinking about um, scalar numbers um, and when you're thinking about them just in real terms, so you're just taking the positive value. That's the absolute part of absolute value. Um, but you know, and hopefully you've heard me say it actually, um, I'm, I'm using the word magnitude often because that's probably a more sensible word to use in this context, right? It's not like you take a vector and then just take the positive part. Um, that's, what is the positive part of a vector? Like which direction are you facing in, right? Magnitude really is getting at what's the size of it, okay? Um, one more, by the way, there's another word. Do you guys remember? There's another M word from complex numbers that we use when we have this same notation. What was that? Modulus. Yeah, very good. So modulus, like it's funny, we use the same notation for, for three fairly different sounding words. But again, these are actually connected, right? Magnitude and modulus in particular are connected because they're the distance from one fixed point, namely the origin in the case of complex numbers, right? So when you're in, on the Argand diagram, these all fit together. Um, but what I want to encourage you to do is, uh, given the different contexts, I want you to try and use the most appropriate word or phrase for it. We're in vectors, so we're thinking about the magnitudes or the sizes of vectors. Okay, now, uh, sorry, that was a bit of an aside. What I want to do is I want you to notice that uh, just like with the cosine rule, um, do you remember, I think Sean, you were the one who mentioned that um, we might memorize the cosine rule uh, in Pythagoras mode, right? So that's this, you don't have to jot it down again because I know you, you guys know it. This is the Pythagoras mode version of the cosine rule, right? And um, what you've got there is that c squared, c, little c, the side, um, the side that would have been the hypotenuse if it was a right angled triangle, that's the subject. So this formula is geared towards finding uh, what that length is. But we saw before, we could just rearrange this, make cos theta, or cos c rather, the subject, and then the same formula is now geared up to find the angle, right? Now I hope you notice we can do exactly the same thing with the dot product. Can you see we've got cos theta again? If we make that the subject, then we can gear up the dot product for finding angles or understanding angle relationships. So let's just quickly jot that down, right? If I make cos theta the subject, uh, I'm just dividing both sides by what? Um, the magnitude. Yeah. Fantastic, the, and you, uh, you paid attention, right? Yes, they are the magnitudes of A and B, um, the product of the magnitudes, I guess we would say, right? So if you divide through by both sides, then you've got cos theta. So um, the thing on the right-hand side, you can see it's independent of theta. We can work all of that out just with the components, um, the x and the y and the z components, right?